decided to pursue teaching because when I was in high school I had a very influential teacher of my own and he really pushed me and made me who I am today and I thought how cool would that be to be able to be that person for somebody else so that really encouraged me to choose the t teaching field. I can say I relate to a majority of my students. I try to um, you know, be young and fresh for the age group that I'm teaching, but at the same time, I make an effort to kind of pick one or two things that I know each student is interested in and carry out um, dialogue throughout the year to show them I do care about you more than just a student. Once you get past uh, the course material, the stuff that you're teaching, which almost by definition very few students are going to have a connection with you on, right? They're there to learn what you know, and so it's hard to connect that way. You know, as a history teacher, I've certainly had some students who are very good at, uh, you know, history already. Some of whom I wouldn't have even wanted to compete with. You know, were just that sharp. So there is a connection with some. Obviously, when I try to be hip or use those, you know, social references, uh, it, it falls flat. But if I, you know, just try to be real with kids about the things that we have in common, then I, I would hope that I'd be able to connect with them. Yeah. Um. I think some students feel that they're trapped in a dark place in school or, or even after school because um, not every student is made for school. Um, we kind of grow up with this perception that everybody's supposed to do well in school and like school and they're supposed to enjoy it, but I'm open when I tell some of my students, maybe you're not meant um, to love it here and that's okay. You still have to, you know, tough it out and get through it, but typically um, I find that sometimes those students who kind of struggle in school and really, really can't wait to get out are the ones that sometimes actually do really great in the real world. Um, I think many students feel that way in part because um, at school you're often asked to do things and work in areas that you don't necessarily enjoy, typically because you don't always have an aptitude for it. Mm -hmm. We tend to enjoy the things we're good at. Um, once people are out of school, they tend to gravitate that way, but in school, um, people are asked to do things so that they don't necessarily want to do. I feel like education has turned into, or schools have turned into sort of like a factory, almost like an assembly line where kids are meeting with teachers who just give them this information and then they're expected to spit it out at the end, and the fun has sort of been taken out of education, and it's even changed since I've been in high school. So I think that a lot of kids don't see that as being fun or exciting, so. Our world is a dark place. I think that, um, you know, students on the cusp of graduating high school get some pretty dark messages all the time. You know, there aren't a lot of jobs. It's gonna be hard to make a living. You're gonna be buried in debt. The world's burning itself up, uh, environmentally speaking. You know, uh, just look at this past calendar year about all of the random acts of of you know terror that have existed in. and so I think that the world is a frightening place and then uh, a lot of times I fear that uh, kids come to school and they're placed in the midst of a very artificial learning environment uh, you know if I were to list the top 10 lessons I've learned in my life zero of them took place when I was sitting at a desk and a person with a tie on was talking to me uh, they are all born out of experience and so I think when uh, students come to school and, and educators approach learning that way, uh, it feel, they feel very distant from it. It feels like it doesn't make any sense. And so not only is the world concerning, but then they come to a place where they're supposed to be learning about how to function in that world, and there's a real disconnect. And then, you know, there's lots of other factors too. This whole testing culture that's so focused on the end destination uh, versus cultivating a meaningful journey. I think by the nature of being a teenager, you students are in the midst of the journey. And when people can see beauty, um, that same um, counterpart person can see darkness. So when students come here and they feel lonely or they feel this is a dark place, I feel that is, my, that is a call to me uh, to try to tap into that child and help him to see help her to see that he and she are beautiful.
relationship between teacher and student is extremely important. When a student feels that they can connect with a teacher, they can trust a teacher, they're more open to ask questions and to inquire about certain topics that they probably wouldn't before. I had a teacher once who told me that what you really need to do is find something unique and personal about every student so that you have something to connect with them on. We don't have a chance to interact with students outside of the class very often other than chatting in the hallway and that you know, conversation is almost always driven by the relationship in the classroom. But I think it's important that you have something other than your content mm -hmm. in order to connect with. I think sometimes students think that the teacher is the enemy because we may see something in a student that they don't see in themselves and our job is to push them, to inspire them, encourage them and sometimes um, it could be a double-edged sword. Maybe the teacher comes on too, um, too hard on the student and that student you know, automatically will shut down. But as a teacher, our job is to push them. You know, I think everybody has sat in a classroom where they kind of get the conclusion that that's the teacher's you know, role in life. They're here to make kids miserable. Students feel like we're the enemy because we have to follow a set of rules and we have to put a numerical value on their work. Um, that's our job. You don't pass high school being a good athlete necessarily or a good dancer or an artist. Um, we have to give you a grade. You can't just be nice. Um, I think that kids think that we're trying to be too hard on them or that we don't necessarily know what we're doing. Sometimes it's unfortunate, but oftentimes all authority, people in authority, sometimes are the enemy. Uh, whether it be parents, teachers, uh, uh, people in authority of every kind. and. You know, so we teachers are sometimes to students, be, are, we are seen as um, those who, uh, you know, we, sometimes kids look at us as we wield the power of grades and as a result those grades could then be uh, the outward manifestation of their success or failures and so they, instead of owning and being responsible for what it is they do, they push the blame and responsibility and the negativity toward teacher. We Part of our job is telling people what to do. Um, maybe it's how some people tell them what to do. Um, and I think maybe everyone doesn't get along with an authority figure, and I guess not all of us are authority figures, but we are in a, in a certain way, in our own way. And some people don't want to listen to authority, and some people just have their own idea no matter what it is. Um, I think it's just something sometimes you have to grow out of. Well, I think it's because teenagers are generally rebellious in nature, so in general people, some kids will bring that out in school to the point where um, they'll fight the teacher and they think that they're the enemy, they're not there to help them, or that they just think the class is stupid and the whole thing is unnecessary. But, I don't know, for some kids they just view teachers as an enemy, and it's not it's not necessarily a good thing, but it's just part of our nature in this when we're at this age. But I think that seniors shouldn't really have that mindset because at that point you're supposed to grow up. To be a teacher is a complete investment, an emotional investment, um, a, a time investment. We're constantly, you know, planning for what's to come. Grading takes a lot of time, but at the same time. I have 126 students that come in and out of my classroom every day and having that connection with each and every one of them, you, you feel for them and when the bell rings at the end of the day, your job doesn't end. You still think about them, you still work towards you know, having them reach their full potential every day so the job really never ends. As far as I'm concerned, the only kind of person who should be in this profession is somebody who's passionate about working with kids, passionate about their topic, uh, and enthusiastic about making a difference. But I shouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just that simple. We deal with kids all day long. It's our life. And if you're here because you're marking time or because you want you know, a dedicated uh, salary plan or summer's off or whatever, those are all the wrong reasons. Yeah. Doesn't mean that you have to pretend they don't matter. But if that's your primary motivation, you don't belong behind a desk. Um, I think that students and teachers should have a good relationship. I mean, 
some teachers aren't willing to open up to that sort of relationship, and some students aren't either. Um, but I think it's very important because you're going to be stuck with them for the rest of the year or for a semester. Or maybe even just for a day if they're a substitute. And it's good to communicate with them so that you would like, so that you, you know how to express your ideas correctly, how to deal with people. Also, the, it's for future experience too, like how to deal with people who are older than you, how to deal with seniority. In the two years that I've taught, it hasn't even really been two full years, but I have met so many different students and every student has a story. They're not just a, a kid on a roster. They have their own story. They have their own background. And the amount that I've learned just from the kids who come in and out of the classroom every day is unbelievable. I've, I've learned probably more from them than I've taught them. Um, and I've taught a lot. So. Um, being able to connect with these students in and out of the classroom is, is a gift and um, it's helping me to become a better person. Some of the quietest students in my classroom have been my most successful. Some of the most outgoing and gregarious and talkative are the ones that don't do very well. I truly believe that each child can succeed, that there are no boundaries or limits to anyone's possibilities ever. And so it is always my hope that they will go beyond even my expectations of what he or she can become. And I really believe that each child in front of me will and can succeed beyond their own possible measures. Uh, you know, I mean, I'll see a student that looks uh, kind of unfocused or whatever, and they write brilliant responses and journals and essays. Uh, students who seem to have uh, an exceptional amount of knowledge about what's going on in the world around them, which is, you know, a goal of mine in the government class as well as my history class, mm -hmm. end up writing very poor papers. You know, so there are many kinds of intelligences and a lot of skills that students have. And I would say within a couple of weeks, a couple of assignments, we can sort of tell who the sharper ones are academically, but we're missing 90% of human talent. You know, I mean, what, where are the skills that other kids have? What are they good at? What are they passionate about? Teachers freak out because they keep, see kids doodling in their notebooks. And I look at some of the things kids are doodling in their notebooks because they're ignoring me. And I'm like, Psh, you're in the wrong classroom. You belong with Ms. Evadon, right? You should be an artist, you know, because clearly you've got an inclination there. I, I think something that's truly tragic is that many students walk through these halls with three numbers ho hovering over their head, their SAT score, their, their class rank and their GPA, and they say, this is who I am as a thinker uh, and as a learner. And those things are obviously products of hard work and achievement, sometimes ability. Um, and you know, I applaud people who work hard at those things and do well, good for them. But uh, I, I do think that it is, uh, it's tragic that that's what people think of when they think of this is who I am as a thinker. I'll tell you, uh, I was not a great high school student. You know, I had mid B's, uh, didn't do exceptionally well on the SATs or anything like that. And uh, did my undergraduate work at Hobart. And when I got there, that's when I really started figuring out how to learn. Uh, and I started to get uh, passionately involved in what I was studying. And uh, at first I really cared about grades, but eventually I got to the point where I was like, I don't really care what number I get as long as it means something to me. And, and that's when it all started clicking, you know. It's, a, it's about connecting with an idea, chasing an idea, being passionately connected to that sort of exploration uh, that learning is about. And I, I fear that the emphasis on grades and numbers squashes a focus on uh, what it should really otherwise be all about. Their score in a classroom is uh, a statistical representation, an average of what they've done, but it's not who they are. And I would be inclined to agree with the assessment that students sometimes attach too much to those scores when they look at themselves in a mirror. I think sometimes we do get a little bit too focused on that and you have to remember that you come in to a school in a learning environment, whether it's college, high school, whatever, and it's great, that's awesome, of course, to have a great GPA, but if 
you're not learning, it doesn't really matter. So it is, you shouldn't get caught, you should try not to get caught up in grades, and you're right, people do. And um, you know, you, whatever you learn, you take that away with you, you can't, no one can ever take that away from you. And it's definitely important to not think about your GPA as much. I think people who measure themselves by numbers, it's not a good way to measure yourself. I mean, if you're an emo if you're like an emotionally interested interesting person or you're like good at a sport or something, it's not good to rate yourself on numbers. I mean, when you grow older and you're dying and you're 80, you're not going to remember your SAT score or your GPA. You're going to remember what you did with the people that you met. You're going to remember all the things you did and if on the way you had like a good GPA and you work hard towards your SATs, that's good. But in the end, it's about how you, what impact you have on everyone else. I mean, obviously grades are important, but I think that, you know, evaluating yourself solely on that and having that make up what you feel that your status is, is just a waste of time because, you know, it doesn't matter like what exact like test score you got or whatever. I mean, just at the long run, just like where you got into school and like your future plans. But, you know, little things like that don't, they shouldn't affect your personality and how you interact with people. I feel very proud to be connected with a profession that says, you know, I'm motivated by doing what's in the best interest of kids and having sort of a purpose-driven life. And, uh, you know, that's that for me is, is what education is really all about. Um, I, I'm not a teacher because that's my career. Um, I, I, this is not my job. This is who I am, and this is what I do. This is not my job for a paycheck. This is not my career that I aspire to. For me, teaching is a calling, and I've answered that call. And while I'm living out that call, I am fulfilled and satisfied by sharing my gifts and talents in teaching children and showing teach children the possibilities and the talents through which they encompass and showcasing them and helping them find their own gifts and their own talents and their own work is, is who I am and is what I do. I am proud to be a teacher because I've had thousands of students in my life and I wouldn't be who I am without them and I look forward to the thousand students yet unknown to me. And for every child that walks in my classroom and sits at my desk in front of me, I know that he was put in front of me for a reason. And it is my responsibility to make sure that I connect with that child and make that child feel special and unique because he and she is. I'm proud to be a teacher. I am proud to be a teacher. Proud to be a teacher. Proud to be a teacher. I am proud to be a teacher. I am proud to be a teacher.